As a project manager, usually you don't have the authority to fire a person on your own discretion. You need to follow an established process and engage your boss and HR department. That's why from your side, firing a person should be a controlled effort, not a spontaneous act. So that's exactly what you are going to learn in this video. But also ask yourself, can you fire a person without feeling guilt or doubts? And believe me, no matter how experienced you are, it's always an unpleasant event. When this process drags for days and weeks, you have a lot of uncomfortable conversations and feelings. People may try to undermine your authority, influence your boss, or simply spread rumors that will demotivate the rest of the team. So firing a person always impacts your credibility in front of your boss. If you don't have a controlled process, it may even impact your career. In my experience, I had to fire people for poor performance, inappropriate behavior, and when clients simply decided to reduce the team for no apparent reasons. The action plan that I am about to share will make this process less stressful and less uncomfortable. You will feel fewer doubts about decisions that you make. So, step number zero learn the process and policies. The biggest challenge comes when there is no immediate reason to fire a person. But a team member underperforms from time to time, or he does a lot of mistakes, or conflicts a lot with others. And in general, it slowly undermines the motivation of the whole team. For sure, you can wait until it gets to a critical point, or you can follow my process. But First of all, you need to check for an established policy to fire someone in the company where you work. After that, you'll add these steps to the existing workflow. Step number one, collect performance information. Imagine that you want to fire someone who doesn't perform well on your project right now. But the same person has an exceptional track record of other projects in the company. So how would you prove that he is not performing well. The challenge here is that your boss will probably not support you based on a one-time dip in performance or one mistake. So you need to provide some performance review that backs up your need to fire this team member. For example, you need to prove that the person consistently doesn't perform his duties, or there is a negative pattern in behavior, or there are many conflicts with other team members. That is why you need to capture all the conflicts and problems into the issue log, not only the last one. This way you'll have a history of dealing with this person. Or if you don't have time, you can do a 360 review with the whole team. It will give you an immediate feedback from others, so it won't be just your personal opinion. But nevertheless, you must give each team member a second chance. That's why here's the next step. Step number two confront the person directly. So, once you notice that a team member starts underperforming, conflicting or doing something wrong, you need to talk with this person at once. Don't wait until the last moment. But when you have this conversation, give them the benefit of the doubt. Never start with a blame or critique, because there is a good chance that the problem is the lack of communication and feedback from your side. You see, all projects are different. Project managers use different leadership approaches and have different expectations. So, the root cause of many problems in project environment is unclear responsibilities. You need to articulate responsibilities and expectations to each and every team member. That's exactly why you need to talk with the person as early as possible before it gets to the firing situation. You need to spell out the problem and try to discover the root cause of it. Step number three, develop an action plan to make amends. Now, the team member will provide you some objective reasons or excuses. But in any case, you communicated your concern, you clearly stated that the current situation is unacceptable and something needs to change. So next, together you need to discuss the expectations and develop an action plan to make amends. Do capture this attempt to correct the situation into the issue log. This way you can also prove that you did your best to help this person. And I want to point this out. 
These three steps are critical. They make firing a person a controllable and transparent process. If you genuinely try to help a person, you shouldn't feel sorry if he doesn't want to make amends. At this point, you put the individual into a probation period. But your work doesn't stop here. Step number four. Get support from your boss. You don't want to come to your boss with a termination request out of the blue. Again, it should be a controlled process. So inform your boss that you are dealing with some challenges with a given team member. Later, if the person won't fulfill the action plan to make amends, it will be easier to get your boss's support. So, in the worst-case scenario, you need to get authorization from your boss to proceed with the termination process. But there is one critical step that you need to do before actually firing someone. Okay, I understand that you can't enjoy this topic, but if you find these tips useful, give this video a like. In return, YouTube will recommend you more valuable videos on project management and leadership. Step number five, develop a cutoff plan. Before delivering the bad news to the person, you must develop a cutoff plan. It means you need to review all the critical accounts and passwords, unique tools, information and contacts that this team member has. Once you fire someone, you need to transition their responsibilities to someone else. But What's more important, you don't want to lose critical project information. And in some cases, you also need to protect the project from reckless and emotional actions. So, you need to cut off access to the project at the same time as you deliver the news. Step number six. Fire a person in person. Firing a person is the number one thing I hate the most in the role of a project manager. But as the leader of the team, you are responsible for making the decision and communicating it to the team member. So as much as it's practical nowadays, you want to deliver the news personally. Ideally, schedule a meeting at the end of the day. It will also help you to bring someone else to the meeting to help you. Usually it's better to have someone from the HR department to explain the process. Now, the best advice that I can give you here is to avoid discussions. So you can say something like this. We're here to communicate the decision that we made, and there is no room for discussion anymore. We decided to terminate your contract, so it's the last day for you in the company. And if you follow the process, you shouldn't feel sorry or regretful. You gave the team member a chance to make amends, maybe even several times, and it still didn't work out. So now it is time to look for new opportunities. Step number seven, inform your team. The following day you need to communicate why you decided to fire a person to the rest of the team. Do not allow gossips and conspiracy theories to spread. People should see a direct correlation between their performance and job security. So, if you want to be a great project manager, you need to learn how to avoid these situations. And the best way to do it is through leadership. That is why I want you to watch this video next. It will teach you how to deal with difficult people on your project rather than firing them. So, click the video now and I'll talk to you there.